And now I have the honor to give the floor to Mr. Soti Keo, Vice Chair of the Cambodian Human Rights Committee, to introduce the report. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Madam Vice President, members of the Troika, honorable members of the United Nations, members of civil society, it is my distinct honor and privilege to address you at the onset of Cambodia's fourth cycle of the Universal Periodic Review and provide some answers to advanced questions we had received. I wish to begin by extending my appreciation to the UPR Secretariat and the Troika members for their exemplary support and arrangement for today's review. I am joined today by my fellow members of the Cambodian delegation, representing national line ministries and institutions, and colleagues from our permanent mission in Geneva, including Excellency Ambassador on my left. Cambodia has established close and constructive collaboration with various United Nations human rights mechanisms. Cambodia is the first country in Asia to host the country office for the OHCHR since 1993. We are proud to inform honorable members of the UN that Cambodia is a state party to eight of the nine core international UN Convention of Human Rights Treaties without reservation, and is also one of the few states in the Asia Pacific region that has delivered unfettered access to, engaged with, and continuously extended the mandate of the special reporter on the situation of human rights in Cambodia. Cambodia has a long track record of engaging in human rights diplomacy through dialogue and cooperation. Cambodia's participation in the past three UPR cycles have contributed to strengthening existing national human rights protection systems, broadening the civil political space and invigorating social economic rights. Some notable policies and measures that have resulted from accepted recommendations from our previous third cycle includes the successful final draft law on the establishment of the National Human Rights Institution, which has been expressed by several member states during the last review. Madam Vice President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to advocate that there exists a universal panacea for all political, economic and social ills, a one-size-fits-all solution for all countries is impractical. Democracy and human rights values are country-specific Cambodia applies these values with consideration for its history, culture, and development stage in order to ensure tangible outcomes. Our approach to advance democracy and the promotion and protection of human rights must therefore reflect on our past tragedy. Cambodia was once a war-torn country, submerged in the ruins of the Khmer Rouge genocide that resulted in the total collapse of institutions and the loss of nearly two million people. Simply put, Cambodia went back to year zero. Although marred by internal conflict and bombarded by chaos, Cambodia has successfully emerged as a peaceful and independent sovereign state respecting the rule of law and achieving political stability and securing dynamic growth and economic, social, and cultural development. One of Cambodia's first step towards peace and reconciliation as a post-conflict country was to seek justice and punish the most senior and responsible leaders of the Khmer Rouge. To put this into context of how significant of an achievement this is, only a few international criminal convictions in the world have been against heads of states. Through the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia, the ECCC, a hybrid tribunal established between the royal government and with great assistance from the United Nations, Nguyen Chia and Kiev Sampan, who are among the highest levels of Khmer Rouge leaders, including Dut, were convicted of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. Cambodia has chosen not to forget or ignore past crimes that were committed, but face head on with its genocidal past. The ECCC has strengthened the respect for the rule of law in Cambodia and helped royal, the royal government and helped the country heal wounds of the past allowing the people of this country to look to the future. And as decided by the royal government and approved by the UN General Assembly, the ECCC has entered into its residual stage with a focus on archiving to preserve and promote the court's legacy, dissemination of information, and especially support projects for victims. 
As Cambodia continues to develop, millions of Cambodians have been lifted from sheer poverty and are enjoying decent livelihoods, with significantly increased life expectancy through the win-win policy of Samlek de Cho Hun Sen, the former Prime Minister of Cambodia. The convergence of concentrated efforts to promote and protect human rights can be seen by prioritizing human capital development through social protection and assistance expansion, support for emergency response, and enhancing welfare holistically within the pentagonal strategy phase one of our current Prime Minister, Samdaik Mohambovar Tapadai Hun Manait. Achieving fundamental human rights that every citizen is entitled to was and remains today the first and foremost important task for the government. As we place the utmost importance on peace to be ardently cherished and protected, we recognize that peace is an enabling right, an imperative precondition foundation for the enjoyment of civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights and the realization of sustainable development. Through peace and political stability, Cambodia's economy has been among the fastest growing economies. Cambodia's annual growth averaged 7% between 2009 and 2019. Poverty rates nearly halved from 33.8% in 2009 to 16.6% in 2022. Despite the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, Cambodia's economic growth is projected to be 5.8% in 2024 and 6% in 2025. Consequently, Cambodia transitioned to lower middle income status as set out by the World Bank Group in 2016 and is set to achieve an upper middle income status by 2030 and high income status by 2050. We are encouraged by a national review showing that most of the 17 sustainable development goals along with our 18th goal of mine clearance are on track despite global uncertainties. While Cambodia is mindful of our shortcomings, the nation strives forward to reduce poverty, vulnerability, and inequality, while boosting human development and economic growth to ensure our society becomes more inclusive, cohesive, and resilient. Cambodia has implemented wide-ranging social assistance schemes. Cambodia's social security system that was enhanced during the COVID-19 pandemic has now been integrated into Cambodian's family package to become regular national social assistance programs that support vulnerable populations from conception until death. We have also launched a voluntary-based voluntary social health protection scheme for dependents for our national social security fund members and self-employed people in the informal economy with the aim of moving toward universal health coverage. And with this, Cambodia has developed a roadmap towards universal health coverage 2024 to 2035. The development of Cambodia's social protection system has prominently improved, covering currently in 2024, 42.1% of the population. On digital technology, Cambodia recognizes its transformative power that can be positively harnessed for sustainable development. On digital infrastructure, Cambodia is expanding connectivity that will allow for internet access to every commune by 2027. Our mobile penetration rate is currently 122.26%. We recognize that digital infrastructure must be adequate, enabling access for all, especially the rural population, so that all are empowered with access to knowledge and information, leaving no one behind. On human capital, Cambodia currently has an abundance of youths with more than 60% below 35 years old of age and an increasingly tech-savvy population. As outlined by our Digital Skills Development Roadmap 2023-2035, Cambodia aims to produce 100,000 digital talents in 10 years. And the royal government itself is transforming into a digital government that will better serve its people by providing transparent public services in a more efficient and effective manner, utilizing emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence. Among the many laws and policies that Cambodia is preparing, it has also finished drafting a comprehensive personal data protection law that will help secure our population's right to privacy and data protection. Madam Vice President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
we are proud that Cambodia's constitution is among the few, if not the only constitution that explicitly enshrines the UN Charter and human rights instruments. Article 31 of our constitution states that the Kingdom of Cambodia shall recognize and respect human rights as stipulated in the United Nations Charter, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the covenants and conventions related to human rights, women's and children's rights. We respect and adhere to the UPR process as an intergovernmental discourse, state-driven and actual-oriented process. It must therefore be exercised in an objective, transparent, constructive and cooperative manner. As a small post-conflict and emerging country, Cambodia attaches great importance to a genuine dialogue-based method that is non-confrontational, non-politicized and non-selective. We are optimistic that assessments will be conducted in a fair and balanced manner abstaining from any preconceived prejudices and prejudgment. Cambodia remains resolute in our engagement with member states in the forthcoming exchanges during this fourth cycle of the review to further promote and protect human rights. Thank you. I'd like to now invite Excellency Long Seo Nita to further present on the uh, achievements of the Cambodia Human Rights Committee. Thank you to the head of the delegation. Allow me to begin by highlighting Cambodia's industrious collaboration with the UN treaty bodies and relevant stakeholders. As the central agent of the government, the Cambodian Human Rights Committee coordinates with the line ministries and parties concerned to compile the human rights report to be submitted to each of the UN treaty body and monitor the implementations of the recommendations accepted through the inter-ministerial inter working groups such as the U UPR report, the ICESCR uh, -E report, the ICCPR report, the International Convention on Eliminations of All Forms and Racial Discrimination report, and the inter International Convention of Protection for All Persons from Enforcers Parent report. To respond to some of the UN-specific report, the government also has established other central mechanism working group, including uh, the Cambodian National Council for Women under the Ministries of Women's Affairs on the CEDAW report with support from the UN Women and provided input by other NGO concerning with um, women's issue. The Cambodian National Council for Children under the Ministries of Social Affairs veterans and youth rehabilitations for the International Convention on the Rights of the Child Report to be supported from UNICEF and um, Child Rights Coalition Cambodia. The Disability Action Council under the Ministry of Social Affairs, veterans and youth rehabilitation for the International Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Report and the National Committee Against Torture under Cruel, Inhumane or Degrading Treatment for punishment under the Ministry of Interior for the International Convention Against Torture under Cruel, Inhumane, Degrading Treatment or Punishment Report. And lastly, the Anti-Corruption Unit for the United Nations Convention Against Corruption Report. During the third Universal Periodic Review back in 2019, Cambodia has accepted 174 recommendations from the respective member states. After the recommendations were adopted, the Cambodian Human Rights Committee also conducted national consultation with line ministries to disseminate the re and review the progress of the recommendation implemented. In preparing for the state's fourth UPR this year, the government produced the 2021 midterm report for the purpose of monitoring the implementations of the accepted recommendation by the relevant ministries. The national concerted effort is further compounded by the collaboration with the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights in Cambodia to conduct numerous consultations throughout the process on both drafts of the reports. Also, consultation with civil societies to receive their valuable inputs and frank feedback, ensuring a comprehensive and holistic approach is utilized. By recognizing the important roles different actors are playing, the states continue to sustain this valuable dialogue with relevant uh, stakeholders in moving forward with the adopted recommendation to be received in this fourth UPR. In order to ensure that national policy is produced and to realize tangible outcomes that is beneficial for everyone. Furthermore, the royal government also maintain an open-door policy for dialogue with civil society and ministerial webpages are remain open 
to receive further um, comments and questions related to all manners. And in addition, the government representatives has, al uh, has always remained at the disposal for non-governmental organizations and civil society meetings upon request to discuss further issues. Some notable policies and measures that result from the previous UPR concerning the advancements of the well-being of the people to build an inclusive and cohesive society include the successful final draft law on the establishment on the, of the National Human Rights Institution. Excellencies, um, currently only 129 human rights institutions have been established worldwide. Cambodia is poised to join the five countries in ASEAN that have already established the national human rights institutions, including Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, and Myanmar. And in pursuing this noble goal, the royal government has collaborated and received technical support from the, from the OACHR and the Asia Pacific Forum of National Human Rights Institution. There have also been 32 consultations further conducted for the draft law to ensure that it is in line with the Paris principles and that expertise are leveraged and that, and that um, comprehensive inputs are received from relevant regional and international stakeholders, including the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commissions on Human Rights, the National Institutions of Human Rights of Malaysia, of Indonesia, of Philippines, the Senate and the National Assemblies, as well as the representative from embassies. Among them, there was also robust participations from national and international civil society organizations. Also, professionals in higher education from the academic institutions, from the Bar Associations of Cambodia, from the um, unions and federations, from women's and children organizations and associations of persons with disabilities, from the press units, and from the representatives of indigenous people. And finally, the draft law is then submitted to the Council of the Ministers in late 2023, where it awaits further revisions from the Council of Jurors. Thank you. I now return the floor back to the head of the de delegations. Thank you. I'd like to um, invite uh, Excellency D. Kamoli, Deputy Director General of Policy and Planning of the Ministry of Education. Madam Vice President and esteemed Member States, Excellency Head of the Education, Excellency Lady and Gentlemen, Today, I have the honor to attend the 46th session of the Universal Period Degree Review Working Group and to present some of the recent significant development regarding the education sector in Cambodia in response to some of the comments raised by the esteemed member state. Recognizing education as a fundamental right and a catalyst for progress and in line with the UN Global Agenda SDG 4, the Royal Government of Cambodia remains consistently committed to inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning for all. This strategic policy has been translated into the education strategic plan, ensuring that all legal residents in Cambodia has access to education institutions of their choices. The right to education is also stipulated in the constitution of the Kingdom of Cambodia, guaranteeing free education to at least grade nine, whereas in practice, education in Cambodia from pre-primary to upper secondary K-12 is free of charge. The seven mandate of the government has drawn close attention to improving the quality of education by introducing key measures, including the implementation of eight priorities by the Ministry of Education as follow. Strengthening school governance, reviewing and revising curricula and extracurricular activities in accordance with the need to strengthen student knowledge, discipline, ethic and behavior. Improving student health through child nutrition programs and food quality control in school. Encouraging the participation of parents, guardians and the community in education with the State Community Partnership for Education, Digital Education, Establishment of Centre of Excellence in Higher Education, System Building and Capacity Development and Development of Physical Education and Sport. The Ministry of Education has demonstrated progress in reforming teacher training institution, and in order to improve the quality of education, the Ministry implement new teaching method for secondary education in line with the PISA assessment program, especially by integrating 21st century knowledge and skill, critical thinking skill, and problem solving skill into the education system, and implementing early grade reading and early grade mathematics 
at the primary level. The ministry also promotes digital education and e-learning platform and introduce teacher trainer career paths. From 2018 to 2023, the ministry has constructed 503 new school buildings and renovated 438 school buildings with the ministry budget and also budget from development partners like the World Bank, Asian Development Bank, EU and China. As of December 2023, the regional government of Cambodia has constructed 4,545 buildings. The government also provides complementary assistance catering to the needs of population, including teacher accommodations, student dorm, school directorate, libraries, toilets, and sanitation facilities. The campaign of clean school within the framework of the school without litter is to promote the well-being, sanitation, and hygiene of educators and students while actively participating in maintaining a green school environment through education by focusing on waste storage, waste sorting, waste recycling, biodiversity conservation, and sustainable development, as well as cultivating a love for the environment to ensure students have access to adequate water and sanitation facility, clean classroom, clean school, and clean communities. In the academic year 2023-2024, according to the core breakthrough indicators, Female students perform better than male students at all levels from preschool to upper secondary school. The results illustrate the special attention provided to female education in Cambodia. The Ministry of Education has provided training courses to teacher trainers on the prevention of online child exploitation, sexual abuses, and sexual transmitted disease such as HIV aid The royal government has taken concrete steps in integrating sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, and sexual characteristics into the curriculum for students at the appropriate age to combat discrimination. The rights to education of LGBT has been integrated into the curriculum of grade 5 to 12, the lesson of which has been widely disseminated via ministry, social media, and other digital platform. The ministry has so far trained 8,000 teachers on the rights to education of the LGBT. Madam Vice President, further progress is exemplified by the Ministry of Education implementation of multilingual education program in 96 schools in 18 districts in remote provinces of the kingdom, including Ratanakiri, Mandolkiri, Kretje, and Stung Train provinces. By focusing on equitable and inclusive access to education, Children with disability from ethnic minority and children living in rural and urban disadvantaged areas are identified among the priority groups. The Ministry of Education established the National Institute of Special Education and Department of Special Education and developed policy on the education of children with disability, inclusive education policy, reference documents for special education teachers, and supporting documents to identify children with disability. Once again, I would like to convey my deep thanks to Madam Vice President, the opportunity to represent reform and development in the education sector. I now return the floor back to agency chair. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to return the floor to Madam Vice President. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency, for the presentations.